Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Card Game Spotlight. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Endstream. Endstream is basically a time traveling game which you're going to be playing with specific operatives and hideouts. And you're going to move from century to century to try and destroy all of your opponent's operatives. When you hit them the first time, they're going to become incapacitated, and then when you hit them again, they'll incinerate. Now, of course, you can kill all of your opponent's operatives to win the game or destroy their hideout. Their hideout is always going to be in the same century, but you can go ahead and move around. You can go anywhere on your timeline or or you can transfer from one side to the other side, from one timeline to another, and try and incapacitate and or incinerate your opponent's characters. If you can manage to do this, you're going to win the game. However, if your hideout gets blown up or all your characters get incinerated, you're going to lose the game. Let's go and take a look at Endstream. Here we have the game Endstream. I went ahead and set it up already, but I'll explain a little bit how they set it up. First of all, you're going to get all of these different timeline cards. It's basically going to be centuries. You're going to take them all, you're going to shuffle them up. They're going to have front and back, so you don't look at them, and then you're going to place them down. And this is going to be your opponent's timeline, or your timeline, and this will be my timeline, right? Uh, from this side to this side, it's going to go from 1800 to 2300, and from this side to this side, it'll be 1800 to 2300. Like I said before, they have a front and a back. Now, after that, you're going to each get a hideout, and you'll do some deck construction. I went ahead and already set it up so each player has their own unique set of cards, as well as placing down, it tells you uh, on each card the hideout, where you're going to place it down. This is 2200, so it's going to go here, and this one here says 2300, so it's going to go here. Uh, then you've got your, your decks here, here you go, just like that. And of course you have the extra time cards, which you're not going to be needing for this, as well as uh, other deck construction cards you could choose to use. Now at the beginning of the game it's pretty simple. You're going to be using these timeline cards and or centuries to spend them for currency. When you move them once it's going to count for one currency and when you move them twice it could count for two now if you spend them twice that means that this can't be used for the next turn or the next turn but at the end of every uh at the beginning of every round they refresh at least once so having them here it'll refresh once here these are all the different colors you can use and if you have an operative on a tile for at least one turn you can choose to flip it over and that will give you the ability to use another different color and why would we want to do that because each of these cards have a cost to them now this symbol over here means this um and this, or this or this, and then the other one, oh, sorry, this this or this, so it's one blue or three red, and then you have the other symbol, which is a straight line, which is which is an and symbol, right? So the cost is over here on the picture, and then the abilities are down here. So on your turn, you're simply going to pay a cost. So let's say I want this one here. This one says a blue and two green, right? So it would be like this, and then you're going to simply put it on the space it says to go to, which is 2200, which I put it right here. Now, um, you, once you've spent all your currency, you don't have to continue spending your currency if you don't want to. But the first turn, your guys aren't going to move. They're going to stay there. But every other subsequent turn, they will. Now, um, when they move, so if this wasn't the first turn of the game, they're going to be able to move on any portion of your timeline, as well as going to the subsequent timeline of your opponents. So the tw 2,000 of your opponent, which would be right here. He could move from here to here, right? Um, yeah, so 2,000. Oh, that's 2,300. Sorry, it would go over here. There, this is the... This is the 2000. Uh, so then he would go from here to here. He can go across, basically. So that's that's the power of doing that. Um, let's see here. Sorry, from here to here. <laughs> that's what it is. Basically, just link up the numbers. It's not as complicated as I'm making it sound. Okay, so then after that, if I want to, I can play any of these other cards here. Maybe a green and two reds, but I can't do that. I don't have these. Uh, this one here is uh, a green and any color. Or yeah, green and any color. So I can do that, a green and a red here. And then I'm going to be able to play this guy at 2300. So I put him over here. And then after that, I'd be finished, and the next player would get to go. They're going to use their cards to simply spend. Maybe this one and maybe this one. One, and then you gotta put this guy on 1900, which would be right here. And let's say he doesn't want to put any more down, okay? The beginning of Mike's turn, these guys all come back up as though they had been spent. They are now unspent, like most other currency games. And I can begin with this character here. If I want to start, I can spend uh, for these, for uh, I can spend, right, and place more characters down. But what's interesting with this is now that I have a character here for a round, I can simply spend the green and flip it over for a blue for later. Or I can flip it over first for a blue for now and then spend it. So that has that potential right there. Uh, I can also then move. I can move to anywhere over here or I can simply move across the table like I had shown before. And I can choose if I want to attack if there's a unit on that space. Now there's no unit on this space currently so I couldn't do that. But if there was, I could. Um, basically attacking is pretty simple. You're going to try and first incapacitate your opponents. So let's say that this character was actually Actually supposed to go to 1900 and I ended up over here. Uh, I have two health here and this guy has two health. I'd be able to spend my abilities here and they tell you what they do. Um, sometimes they're going to tell you to move, sometimes they're going to tell you to do damage, but if I had one ability that said do two damage right and it cost me these two colors here, 
here. I could attack and do 2d damage to this guy. He would then become incapacitated. And on the next round, because he gets frozen for two rounds, if I hit him again for two damage, he gets incinerated and he's removed. Characters are never destroyed on the first uh, uh, damage, uh, and it has to be completely the full total damage. So if it's two, it has to be two damage. It can't be one and then one. However, that's different for your hideouts. Hideouts cost, like this one's an 11, and this one over here has got a 10. You, have, you can do one damage, two, three, four, until it is removed. Uh, so you want to protect these guys as best as possible. Um, so that's the basic idea, right? And you can keep playing cards. This one here is going to be uh, two, oh, so one red, and then uh, two of any color. That's going to go on 1800, which is all the way over here. And so these are the cards. You only have so many cards to use, but you'll be able to move them around the board and attack. All these abilities are pretty simple. You have strike two, um, instantly um, without ripple effect, it says spin agenda. So there's all these different keywords we could, you can go ahead and look up. Um, and then of course you have the abilities on your uh, on your hideouts. Now normally they can't move, but there is uh, certain certain uh, hideouts that can actually move. You're gonna continue to go around the board, hitting your opponent's operatives, disintegrating all of them, or destroying their hideout. And the person who is able to do that to your opponent is going to win the game of End Stream. So what is there to say about End Stream? Well, the first thing is the theme. The theme is rock hard solid. You have two different timelines, and of course you have the different centuries, and you're trying to remove your opponents from existence. It's not enough to simply kill them because their friends or allies can make sure that they stay alive by looping through time. It has a really interesting aspect there. Now, of course, if you hit them twice, it's going to remove them from existence completely and they're never going to come back. And the hideout is what kind of is the core lifeblood of the other team, right? So that is kind of what you're trying to do, destroy them. The art in the game is spectacular. I love the style of the art. The cards are very nice. They're very thick. And this looks like a pretty much fully done game already. Like I would be happy with this game just as it is as far as the component quality. I mean, they're basically cards, but they're nice linen cards, and they have some beautiful artwork on there. And the, the abilities make sense. There's quite a lot of abilities, so I didn't go into describing exactly all of them, but you can go ahead and look it up on the campaign, and they'll probably tell you maybe a rule book or something like that. They'll explain the different abilities. But the idea is, of course, striking your opponents, moving around the board, and manipulating time and space. Now, what else can I say about the game? Well, the movement works pretty well. Everything was pretty straightforward except there's some bizarre aspects of the game like freezing uh when you when you hit your incapacitate one of your targets they they frozen for the turn and then the turn afterward does that mean this turn and then your next turn which means they're going to be freed the next turn or does that mean simply two player turns in which case you need to protect them i'm not exactly sure there's some like unfinished questions i have for the game as far as that goes it has the essence of being all there and for the most part it makes sense i mean even spending the currencies and all that works because you're basically using the lifeblood of each and every century century to your advantage the deck building makes sense and there's quite an extra amount of cards in the decks that you can actually the cards you can actually choose from there probably is gonna be even more in the campaign um and they all work they all make sense but there's a few little things that i'm like maybe this is the rule maybe this is the rule i hope they're gonna have it all like settled and final when uh the you know when it all comes out on kickstarter and whatnot and uh that that will be for you to judge personally uh for me i can say that i like the theme i enjoy the aspects and quality of the game and for the most part it all kind of functions and works and it has some really interesting mechanics that work very intuitively with the theme, and I really do like that. But it'll be up to you to decide if you want to purchase Endstream, which is on Kickstarter, down below in the comments.